Uh, just a quick background about myself. Uh, I co-founded first Makerspace in China, this Intergen in Shanghai. Uh, in 2011, uh, along with uh, an average plan from NYU and Sophia Lerner, now at the University of Michigan, uh, we started to we started a, a research hub in Shanghai called Hackpad. It's really looking at what the maker movement and how it's going to cross with the um, production, with the ecosystem in China. Uh, over the past five, four years, five, almost five years, um, we have been doing this through hosting panel with Cinema uh, Publishing. Uh, and through these years, the maker movement is starting to catch attention from all different kinds of uh, organizations, uh, scientific, business, academic. Uh, in 2015, I started uh, Maker Collider with the support of Intel. And then the Shenzhen Open Innovation Lab with the support of the Shenzhen government. Um, so with that, welcome everybody to Shenzhen. And the Shenzhen is an interesting place. Uh, how many people have things you carry around is made in Shenzhen? Well, if you have a smartphone, you are. And that's how people think about Shenzhen. Uh, it mass infrastructure for manufacturers, mass infrastructures uh, for building stuff. Uh, but in the past couple of years, this city is becoming more innovative. Uh, last year, uh, a big bomb is dropped on the city's uh, Prime Minister Yi Keqiang show up in Shenzhen at the first day of business in 2015 uh, in Taiwan Makerspace. By the way, that's Eric, speaker from yesterday. Um, and he started to talk about these things called the mass innovations and public entrepreneurship, uh, encouraging more people to jump into uh, starting, making, uh, innovate. Um, and along with that, it's not just the government. Uh, Intel, uh, this is uh, the Intel CEO, became, he came to Shenzhen last year, launching the in Intel initiative to look at, to bootstrap the mass innovation as part of the support for the Chinese the mass makerspace policy, uh, Intel launch program here. Uh, we are really looking at what's going on with the, this kind of government attentions, uh, business attentions. Uh, one thing it comes down to is the, uh, well, some business number. Um, I think everybody talks about sensor. Everybody talks about IoT these days. And this is kind of, that number is for IoT. A uh, huge number. But more interesting is in the Gartner report is the actually half of this device are going to come from startup starting in the next two years, three years. And that's where the opportunity is for the platform vendor uh, like Intel, whose platform they are using is critical. For government, where there's no new company come from, they are important. Uh, and people are pinning the hope on the maker movement. Uh, supported by open source hardware, supported by sharing, supported by digital fabrications. Uh, Maker Movement has been going through an exponential growth in the past 10 years. And that, in the past couple of years, it reached the critical mass. Um, and it's starting to turn into interesting way to bootstrap business. Instead of having to amass a huge amount of money to go into building the hardware, now you can actually build a prototype put it on Kickstarter with the help of the internet, uh, the project can get funded. Uh, so this is pumping the, well, a lot of talks about opening up the long tail of the uh, hardware market, the long tail. What used to, uh, it's, the long tail market is pretty much enabled by this combination of the open hardware, internet sharing, internet enabled funding, uh, that makes what used what was not possible, now is possible. And a simplistic look at the, the promise of the maker movement is the people going to make a space, people learn about makings. Now with the support of crowdfunding, you can build internet of things. And that's what one version of the maker movement, and that's what gets a lot of people excited. But for the past couple of years, and this is all nice and sound theoretical, and but for the past couple of years, through the work with Hack Matters, uh, we started to discover that's more to it than just the simple story of making to IoT. And, and that brings us to Shenzhen. So this afternoon, I think one of the track is the open source hardware and makings. And one of the things, if you're starting to talk about makings, uh, now 
Shenzhen has become in this Hollywood of power, Silicon Valley of power. And one of the critical factors for this is this place. It's called Hua Chang Bay. Uh, if you get a chance, you must visit it. This is giant five city block maker space with everything, electronic component, everything you can think of. And Eric there put together a beautiful map. I think it's in the back of the brochure. But what's interesting about Hua Chang Bay? Where it come from? What is it there? What has it done? Um, one thing to look at is this promise of the maker movement. Everybody can make hardware. You don't have to be come from a specific background. You can come, learn, and build hardware. And for maker movement, it's a promise. But for Hua Chang Bay, it's a reality has already been realized. And the manifestation of this is this Sanzai. Uh This is, well, they're starting up as, counter, uh, as counterfeit, as copy careful. But through the years, they flourish. Uh, if you look at also the mobile phone here, they are not demo. This is all shipping products. Um, one of them is a cell phone with seven speakers. It's as loud as a boombox. <laughs> and this is a phone specific created for people working in the construction site who needs entertainment, but they cannot use headset. Um, and that's a phone they ship about. And in overall, over five years, they ship about 30 million units. Is this uh, a or Gen Y? Well, uh, well, this is for much older Gen Y. Well, this is for the working class. A, a generation, uh, a, a group of people where the big company will never pay attention to. And this, they are served by Sun Um And there are more examples of this. But to look at this, is the how this has changed the entire industry, how this has changed the entire business. So this is 2016. If we go back to 2006, and we started to talk about mobile industry, that's the two big names. That's Nokia, that's Motorola. Uh, if I'm standing here in 2006 and talk about, I'm predicting Nokia is going to go out of business in 10 years. And this week, the host will probably be finding a way to kick me off the stage. That's crazy talk. But in reality, it went out of, it got acquired by Microsoft in 2012. What happened? It's not Apple. It's really this massive amount of people participating in this ecosystem called Sanzai. There are about 30,000 companies participating in this, and over a million to two million people. Uh, they are producing about 300 million cell phones a year. They are shipping to Africa, shipping to uh, Middle East, shipping to Southeast Asia, South America, Russia, uh, and all over the place. And the 300 million cell phones a year is coming from an ecosystem of well, barely any brand. Uh, they fit into every niche where the big companies don't care to fulfill. They create to every niche where the, the big company doesn't care. And through over the time, the long tail grows to about a quarter of the global mobile shipment. And they tip, they tip the entire industry. That's how Motorola went down. That's how Nokia went down. Um, and let's more to this. And how do they do it? People say, okay, well, well they just counterfeit, they pirate intellectual property, and that's it. They, that's, then they have cheap labors. And that's how they did it. But actually, it's not. It's actually building on a beautiful open innovation system. Um, as, as you see on this, this is how a typical smart watch looks like in Shenzhen. So four components composing it. They come from every single one of them, you get multiple suppliers. Every single one of them is open on the market. You can buy them. You can get them. You can even get a schematic for it to modify yourself. And so it's becoming layer of layer of the industry, uh, layer of layer of the, the business. People go and come and build their own things. Uh, in the past couple of years, this has bootstrapping new type of brand. Uh, this is Weibo, right on the number two cell phone brand in France. Uh, this is Tino. This is the number one smartphone in Africa. Uh, oh, no, go on, forget, forget this. Uh, and how does the system work? You can come to the ecosystem with some ideas. And this is all the compositions of different kind of uh, business, industry. Uh, company in these systems. They'll finance, they'll help you design, help you do engineering, help you to do all that. You come in as a partner, finding the right partner, launching your product, 
and this is running in sense a three month cycle. Uh, just a quick story about a friend of ours, uh, Robin Wu, he basically have a team of the five people and they developed this TV stick in about six months. Launching late 2014, last year they did about $12 million and that number is unimaginable in any other place other than Shenzhen. And this ecosystem is actually opening up to a lot more people to, to come in, a lot more people to uh, experiment with it. And that's the, that's the basis why Shenzhen is becoming the centers of this maker movement, as the center of the mass innovations. Uh, but just looking at this, building this, um, for this to just become a massive scale, uh, that's require another change. And I think this is a turn. This is another thing everybody's paying attention to, the artificial intelligence. But we are looking at a serious usage of artificial intelligence. But there are another side of AI. It's the goofy usage. Just as internet. Everybody say about internet, it can bring higher education, everything to your house, but we end up Facebooking and watching porn. So <laughs> that's we are looking for the porn and Facebook for for the AI. And this is building goofy applications and goofy objects. Uh, and this has to be done in a massive scale. This has to be done by people who's interested, by people who has idea, and can very quickly, the ecosystem support to very quickly realize the ideas. Uh, so one part of this is the, people still stuck at the concept of starting a small hardware company it has to be venture-backed, engineering-driven, technology-driven. But this has already caused problems. The VC model has caused problems creating inequality, creating the, uh, the problem in the societies. Uh, even Forbes is talking about, well, entrepreneurs should stop wasting time looking for VC, just do business. Um, so we're looking at Shenzhen, there's a huge culture of this participation in the open innovations, but the massive participation in the creation of the new objects. I'm going to go this slide. So what we have been looking at is this really the next stage. Uh, the global maker movement is bringing people, becoming comfortable, making power, building power, building <coughs> things, uh, realize their imaginations. And the ecosystem here in Shenzhen is ready to amplify, to ready to bring this to the next stage. You build two of these things in the maker space, go call on it and provide it, expanding the effect, and bring it to the next stage. And the best part is everybody can participate because now the AI is finally coming to a stage where it actually kind of works. Now it can actually see, now it can actually hear with series. Uh, now it can actually start to understand and interact with the world, with the, with the promise of AI for the past 40 years, 50 years. And, but other than just taking it and do all the serious stuff. Uh, let's look at what's the Facebook, what's the Twitter, what's the... Uh, that goofy application is going to enlarge the entire application, explore the AI. So what we have been doing in the past years is the taking this concept, everybody can do it. Uh, we went into the university campus. Uh, we work with university students. Let's get bringing them the concept. This is what intelligent object is. This is what uh, what intelligent object looks like, could look like, what the AI could look like. Uh, and with a three months program, uh, they went through and they designed something they think it might be useful. And we're trying to, they will be trying to do this, validated on call fundings. And here's some interesting project coming out of that. Uh, this is a food therapy program. So if you have, um, oh, so the, Chinese, traditional Chinese medicine. Uh, they, there's ideas of this qi, there's idea of this, uh, your sleeping pattern reflecting on the health of your organs. Uh, so they build a sleep trackers and taking the sleep tracking data over time. Uh, and you can start it to know uh, with the sleeping, with your sleeping patterns, you can start it to know which part of your body needs more attention and take that data, they map directly into this uh, traditional Chinese notion of food therapies. Uh, every year it's divided into 24 periods. 
and in every period, what kind of food, what kind of things are beneficial for what kind of, which one of the organs. So you have a liver, uh, if you are detected your liver is not, uh, is getting weak, then you would pop up with suggestions of what to eat. Uh, the Chinese medicine has been traditionally been a notion of not scientific. But now we are in the era of big data. Everybody say algorithm and no, nobody knows how it works. So kind of this is ancient Chinese algorithm, realization in uh, a modern smart device. But the cool thing of this is the Sophia is the founder of the projects. She has absolutely no background in hardware. She is coming from a Chinese medicine background. Um, parking into the system. The whole thing was built within about five weeks. Um, and now it's coming, uh, probably coming to call on the next month. Uh, so this is starting to, and this started to see the, how people can grasp, take it, the, the opportunity the ecosystem has to offer and turn it into the new, turn the old ideas into a realizable products. And this is the other one. Um, so the AI has been, we have been using the how child learns, how child acquire language and identify objects uh, as we hold in our toddlers, walk around the street and starting to point everything out to them saying, okay, there's a, there's a puppy, there's a cat, there's a tree. Uh, kids acquire language, kids acquire uh, the, the knowledge of objects around them. But, and that has the idea been pushed into the AI in the past five years uh, with convolutionary neural net to, to learn about identifying objects. And now we are turning the table around. So this is a small, uh, small toy kids can hold around with a camera and it will actually speak everything he sees. And the kid can play around with it and this will start to help kids to increase the vocabulary. And this also comes out from one of our uh, innovation camp and uh, Andy there, she's in uh, education background. Um, so right now we started to look at this is the once you bring the system to a level where people can start to think about smart object, creating a smart object in the abstract levels uh, with ecosystem support, uh, things can get diverse, things can get more interesting, a uh, crazy idea can be realized and that center of that realization is Shenzhen. So it's great to see the assembly to take place in Shenzhen and hope everybody enjoy the trip here. Thank you.